Hi Lee, can you tell me a little bit about the band and the band name? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. This is Lee Payne from Club and Hoof, and um, we've been going for about 40 years now. We started in uh, 1979, was it real all that time ago? And uh, released the uh, Open Ritual EP, and that did real well. We got in the uh, Kerrang Heavy Metal charts, got to number 18. And then we did our debut album. We signed to uh, Neat Records, and uh, that did really good too. And it's still available right now, so uh, you know, after all this time, we must have been doing something right. Uh, then we went on to release the album Dominator, which is about uh, science fiction uh, kind of themed album uh, with a concept. And then we released uh, Sultan's Ransom, and that was kind of an eclectic album, and it kind of defined our sound and uh, really sort of um, was really instrumental in sort of defining our um, band identity too. You know, so after Opening Ritual, we did uh, Either Sun album. And we recorded that with uh, famous producer Tom Galley. Uh, then we did Resist or Surf. And then we got a, an Anglo American lineup with, uh, consisting of George Core on vocals and Danny White on uh, drums. And uh, they're from Dallas. And the rest of the band are from England. And the album did so well. We did our first uh, headline tour of America. And it went so well, we had to do another tour of America, sort of back to back. And uh, who Mores for the Morning Star was kind of our biggest album. So uh, here we are to date with uh, The Age of Steel, which I think it's the best album we've ever done. And uh, it's going to be released on the 24th of April. Um, I came up with the name Clovenhoof because I wanted something with kind of uh, three syllables that I knew the uh, heavy metal fans can kind of chant out. Uh, I wanted something kind of uh, occult themed, but not completely obvious. So uh, I knew Clovenhoof was something to do with the feet of the devil and to uh, show the cloven hoof is to uh, let one's uh, evil nature kind of show through, I knew that. But I didn't know uh, quite the extent of uh, what the uh, significance of the name was to uh, kind of devil worshippers and things. Uh, the Church of Satan actually has the um, copyright on the name cloven hoof for uh, the web anyway. So um, you know, I, it's very kind of steeped in that. So um, that's how I came up with the name and uh, the rest is history as they say. Hi Lee, can you tell us a little bit about the Age of Steel album? Uh, well, the uh, the only trouble was it's been quite delayed really for about a year and a half uh, because we had to do, as I said, back-to-back -back American tours and then we went and uh, played the Gallia Festival in uh, Spain. So then we were going to start record, recording the album and everything and uh, then we got off at another festival in Portugal and we'd never played in Portugal before and we realised the fans were going to be great, so uh, we went and played a festival in Portugal. That went so well, then we got asked to tour in Spain, so we did a Spanish tour, and then we thought, you know, at least we'll be able to finish the album off now, and we still couldn't because we got asked to do a festival uh, at the Hard Rock Hell. Uh, so that was that was cool, and in the end we ended up in, in Athens in Greece uh, and it was like a biblical experience, you know, the, the grown men crying and stuff, so, uh, you know, that was a, quite a memorable show. So, in the end, the album's been kind of delayed for about a, a year and a half. So, when we eventually managed to kind of uh, start work on the album, it was kind of, uh, all the backing tracks were done in England and then the vocals were sent to America, so a couple of tracks were done in America and then George the singer, he, he flew back to England and finish off the album, so about 90% uh, of the album really was kind of uh, recorded in England and then the album was uh, mixed and then sent to Austria where it was kind of mastered, so uh, it's quite a few continents um, involved in the making of the album. And uh, I realised there was a lot of expectation on the band really for this album because of the success of Who Wants for the Morning Star, so uh, it's a conscious attempt to try and um, do all the things that we do really, really well. And, uh, and please our fans, you know, like, and uh, so I knew, I knew a concept piece had to uh, constitute at least half the album. And uh, there was an album that we did called Dominator, uh, which was a concept album, and the fans really loved that one. So I was thinking how to, uh, you know, resurrect the, the character and stuff and have like part two of the story. And uh, it turned out really, really well, and there was so much material that um, I thought it'd be really good to have one side of the album devoted to the concept piece and then the next album will be the concluding part of the story which uh, will be really good so um, I think it's true to say really uh, Age of Steel and the next album have been written round about the same kind of time 
So, uh, in terms of the tracks, the album kind of kicks off with a song about uh, Countess Bathory, the track Bathory, and um, it sort of deals with the, like the life of like the famous uh, countess who used to bathe in blood of her servants, and and uh, you know she got bricked up at the end. So uh, it was kind of a true life uh, kind of uh, gothic uh, horror story. Uh, the second track on there is Alderley Edge. It's uh, an epic piece, very kind of uh, Tolkien-esque, and uh, it deals with kind of uh, sword and sorcery, and we're kind of known for songs like that. And it's also a place in Cheshire where the uh, legend of a, of a wizard kind of started off. And um, Alan Garner wrote a book called The Weird Stone of Brisingerman, and uh, that was great. So I actually based the track uh, on his book, and uh, it turned out real well. Uh, the third song is kind of more of a, a political song, uh, it's called Apathy and uh, we had uh, quite a lot of political unrest in England uh, this year uh, and I think the, uh, the biggest crime ever is when people won't vote at all, so uh, it's kind of an observation on that. Uh, and then there's the potential next single uh, called Touch the Rainbow which is a personal favourite of mine, uh, it's about my observations on how to justify my life as a musician and dealing with all the obstacles that befall you. Uh, it's not what, what goes wrong, it's how you deal with them and learn from that. And holding on to your music and play music from the heart and not following fashion trends. And it's there to kind of offer encouragement to bands kind of started off to stay true to what they really believe in and to fight for their music. Uh, the side kind of finishes with a track called Bedlam, which uh, it's about the famous insane uh, asylum and I kind of put myself uh, in the position of uh, thinking what it would be like to be trapped in one of these cells alone with madness <laughs> and working in this business you know mm. I think you deal with madness every single day so uh, that was cool and I think it's, it's got a master class of uh, amazing vocals from uh, George Cole you know I think it's one of the, uh, the, the best track he's, he's ever sung you know his, his vocals are incredible. Uh, so then we've got the uh, section of the album which is a concept piece and it deals with uh, the resurrection of a character called uh, the Dominator and he's an intergalactic tyrant, um, tyrannical kind of figure really. Uh, it's very much sort of Star Wars influenced and um, it's all about a, a dictator who was genetically created and, he over and he's super intelligent and he plugs into the main computers of, uh, of his world and he, he takes over and he forges a, an evil sort of uh, galactic kind of empire and um, he's resurrected and it's sort of charts of his uh, rise to power so the second half don't forget will be on the next album so the first uh, track of this is a track called Ascension which is about him being resurrected and all his followers get getting behind him and uh, he rebuilds his uh, evil empire the second track on there is Gods of War, and that's the single which will be out kind of right now. Uh, and uh, it's sort of, uh, it's all about the spirit of the warrior, um, knowing that uh, you almost certainly can't win, but uh, you're gonna carry on and keep fighting to the death. Uh, it's kind of a song of freedom too. So, uh, you know, that's a, it's a real good track, so I hope you check it out. Um, the third track is Victims of the Fury, and um, it's all about the cosmos really sort of uh, feeling sorry for itself and saying, how do we let this happen? Uh, it's kind of a curse of the fate kind of thing, but uh, you know, to do nothing is the most uh, dangerous thing at all. And uh, they kind of let the uh, evil empire take over. And um, then there's uh, a track called Judas, which is about the uh, rebel alliance getting betrayed to the dominator and the album uh, concludes with a track called Age of Steel, which is the Dominator's forces being triumphant and the invasion of Earth and Earth falling under the um, cruel hand of the Dominator. So uh, go and check the album out as soon as you can. Billy, can I just ask a couple more questions, please? Yeah, fire away. Yeah. Right. Who painted the cover art for Age, uh, for Age of Steel and how did you sign with Pure Steel Records? Uh, well, the album was painted by uh, Dimitar Nikolov. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. You know, like uh, I probably can pronounce it completely wrong. But uh, he, he's an amazing artist, and uh, he sent me some sketches originally, and uh, then he asked me for my interpretation, what, what how I envisaged the uh, Dominator character. So I sent him as much reference material as I could get my hands on, 
and uh, sort of left him to it really. And in the end, uh, when he when I saw the the, the finished painting, it completely blew me away. He he's absolutely nailed it, you know, dead on. You know, like it's exactly like I would have imagined the Dominator uh, character. So uh, he did a blinding job. Uh, what was the other question? Um, how did you sign with Pure Steel Records? Oh yeah, that that was great. There's um. There's a guy called uh, Bob Mitchell in America who I've known for, for years. You know, he's an Im incredible guy. And uh, he's the uh, A&R um, chap at uh, Pure Steel in America, that branch. And uh, he said, is there any chance Clovenhoof might uh, sign for Pure Steel? Uh, and we were completely happy with the label that we had, you know, uh, High Roller Records. I've got a great relationship with them. Uh, but in the end, uh, Bob convinced me that uh, because we had a, a forthcoming American tour, that they were... Uh, better place to support us you know during an American tour so uh, we were considering you know signing with uh, Pure Steel and then we did a headline show in Germany at the Sword Brothers Festival and the label owner Andreas turned up to see us and we really blew the roof off the place you know like it was an incredible show and the audience were brilliant and he wanted to sign us on the spot and Andreas is such a cool guy and uh, you know we just couldn't refuse signing for him so uh, that's how we signed for Pure Steel. Thank you. Right, Lee, have Cloven Hoof got any forthcoming uh, tours coming up? Uh, well, we have got we have got tours, but um, I've been kind of instructed to work on the uh, the next follow up album to Age of Steel, because it did take quite a long time for uh, the album to come out. There was all delays because uh, you know all the shows and everything got in the way and kind of delayed us uh, by about a year or you know a year or so. So. That doesn't happen again. Uh, the plan is for me to write the next album, for us to record the album this year, and then uh, start doing some festivals at the end of the year, which means we're going to have the album all ready to go next year, so uh, we'll be able to tour all over the world next year without uh, worrying about uh, doing, a, doing the follow-up album. So that's what we're doing at the moment. But having said that, uh, next year in November, we've got a, an amazing... Uh, a gig lined up uh, on Motor Cruise Rocks. Uh, it's a, a metal cruise uh, that will be uh, will be doing for about five days, and it'll be cruising around the Mediterranean from Genoa. We'll take in Marseille and Barcelona, and back again. And the ship's going to be full of uh, crazy metal heads, and uh, we'll have a while of a time. They can have selfies and stuff, and uh, we'll sign autographs and get to play. Uh, a, one of our blistering sets every night, so that'll be amazing. So uh, that's next year. But um, stay tuned because uh, you know all the, all the forthcoming shows we'll be doing will, will be announced. But it'll be half after uh, we finish the uh, the follow up album, probably in the summer. So Lee, can you tell us about an epic moment in a live performance? Oh, there's about a million ones. Oh my goodness, you know, in 40 years. But because you're Antichrist magazine. I'll, I'll tell you something that happened at a show which uh, might be quite interesting. Uh, we were playing uh, playing a show on our American tour. We're in New Orleans, and like one of uh, one of the fans kind of turned up, and he's asking how everything was going. And uh, you know, we told him everything's fantastic. The audiences are brilliant. The only thing that we uh, was a bit of a downer was every time we played the Cloven Hoof song, uh, get to, when we get to the witch's room part we get something weird happen, like the guitarist would break strings, or there'd be amps that would go, or the lights would go off, and we, you know, we were just getting kind of spooked that, uh, you know, something weird happens on the same spot on the same song, you know, and it kind of dogged us for most of our kind of career, really. Um, it got so bad when we were playing the Cloven Hoof track that nobody, uh, nobody in the band really wanted to attempt fight and play it, so we stopped playing playing the song for years, you know. And, uh, you know, we've, we kind of uh, realise it's an integral part of our set. So, uh, you know, we, we play it now anyway. So, uh, anyway, so when we when we sort of talking about it to the fan in New Orleans, he said, well, uh, I'm going to uh, check you out at uh, Frost and Fire uh, Festival that we were going to be playing in California. He said, so I'll see you there, you know, I'll be watching if anything weird happens, you know. So... Uh, we went up to uh, California, we did the uh, Frost and Fire Festival, and sure enough, as when we were playing the Cloven Hoof track, we got to the Witch's Room part, which is a real w witchy spell, and my crucifix f just 
flo it's as if somebody ripped it off my neck and threw it at the drum riser. And it's on film as well, so it got captured. And uh, I remember like being amazed just seeing my kind of crucifix come off and hit the drum riser. I ran over to the drum riser and I kind of picked the cross up and uh, I showed it George, you know, and George went, you know, sort of a mid song going like, I didn't see it, you know, like, and, uh, but the guy who I was talking to, he watched it because he was watching like a hawk to see if anything happened. And uh, they captured it on film. So when I came off stage, uh, the fan rushed up to me, went, I saw it, the crucifix looked like it just flew through the air, you know, off your neck and everything, just ripped off your chain, you know. And, uh, you know, he be I think he became a, a, a believer then, you know. So uh, after all the uh, weird things that happened to the band, it's like, uh, how many of these things are coincidence before, you know, you're going to have to admit their fact kind of thing. So, uh, where anyone now? So, uh, no, no trouble from you. Can you tell me of any recent heavy metal albums that have impressed you and why? Uh, an album that really impressed me lately has been uh, Judas Priest's Firepower album. I think it's a real uh, return to form and I think it's a really good album. Um, the last album I kind of enjoyed as much from Judas Priest was uh, an album called Jugulator. I thought it was fantastic, uh, with, uh, it had Ripper Owens on it and it had some brilliant songs like um, Death Row, uh, Burning Hell and Cathedral Spires, I thought it was a fantastic song. Um, and then the follow-up album probably probably wasn't as good, you know, like Demolition, but it was still, still a good album, it had its moments. Uh, and then there was the uh, eagerly awaited return of uh, Rob Alford back to Judas Priest, which is uh, what we all kind of wanted. Uh, but I was a little bit disappointed with Angel of uh, Retribution, and, uh, you know, I speak as a massive Judas Priest fan, and uh, I love Rob Alford to pieces, you know, like he... He helped us get get our start, really. He took our demo tapes into Radio 1 and got us played on the uh, Tommy Vance show, you know. So, you know, I owe him a lot. So, uh, you know, I, I'm such a massive fan of Judas Priest. But Angel Retribution, I thought, uh, could have been, like, a lot better. And then uh, they made the Nostradamus, and they kind of lost me on that one. So then uh, I kind of uh, stopped listening to Judas Priest, really, uh, since then. And um, But somebody said, uh, you really must check out Firepower, it's really good, and, uh, and I did, and I was really impressed, and uh, it is a return to form. So, uh, you know, it's terrible to hear about uh, Glenn Tipton with his uh, Parkinson's disease, you know, it's a, it's a tragedy, but, um, you know, he's still soldiering on and uh, helping write, so, so uh, I look forward to uh, the next album they do as well. So, Lee, what is the metal scene like in Wolverhampton at the moment? Um, well, we haven't played in Wolverhampton for quite a long time, you know, because we kind of play all over the world, and I suppose uh, we should play in England a lot more. Um, there's some really great venues. There's a, a venue called Slade Room that a lot of bands play, you know. There's a thriving metal community, uh, as always. And there's a brilliant new venue uh, called the Steel Mill. And uh, KK Downing of Jesus Priest uh, owns the venue, and uh, they've got some fantastic bands there. So I, I think that's probably the best uh, venue around and, uh, and it's doing uh, really well. Uh, as regards the, the kind of uh, local bands, it's kind of tough for them really. Um, there's a lot of kind of cover bands around and uh, you know, I've got mixed feelings about that. I think bands should go out and play their own music and uh, utilise their own talent, you know. It's, we need more metal bands playing their own stuff, you know, and instead of like recycling other other people's stuff and I think it's quite hard for them because uh, unless they, they do cover stuff you know it's hard to get the people to sort of turn up so I think metals it's true to say metals gone kind of underground in England but uh, you know they're still there in their thousands and uh, you know there, there's some fantastic uh, venues uh, you know for them to turn up it just needs the fans to go out there and support local bands you know it's really important because you know for metal to, to survive and go from strength to strength. People need to support local bands and local talent. Lee, what are your plans for the future? Uh, well, there's a lot of things happening in the Cloven Hoof camp. Uh, I, I think the mo most important thing after uh, the Age of Steel's uh, released is uh, we, we played a set in Germany at the uh, famous Bang Your Head Festival. And they recorded it in high definition on uh, 20 cameras. And I've only just seen the, the footage and I must say I was completely blown away by how fantastic the soundtrack sounds. Uh, 
I think it's because obviously we've been touring the world for such a long time and we did the two back-to-back -back American tours and all the festivals and stuff and it's made us like super tight and that was the first thing that struck me of how uh, you know how much more powerful you are live uh, I think it's because of the, uh, the the adrenaline and you're feeding off the crowd and the more crazy the crowd gets the harder we rock out but um, at Bang Your Head, they really captured the true magic of Clovenhoof Live. Uh, so uh, there are plans to uh, release that uh, as a high definition uh, DVD uh, in June, along with the, uh, with the live album, because uh, it just sounds absolutely incredible. So I'm really looking forward to that one. So ca catch that uh, DVD when it comes out in June. Um, there, I think High Roller are going to release our uh, debut album, uh, and it's going to be with a never seen before photographs and it's going to be a really really good package uh, and I think High Roller are going to re-release um, the Eye of the Sun album as well so so that's that, that's a couple of cool releases and I think around about uh, Christmas time uh, they're going to be uh, releasing a box set of Sultan's Ransom and Dominator plus some other stuff so uh, plenty to look forward to uh, from all you man uh, metal maniacs um, I'd just like to say thanks to everyone for supporting us all this time, uh, for 40 years. Um, we just keep trying to get better for you. And uh, everybody knows Clovenhoof for the real deal. And uh, we believe in the fans and they believe in us. So Clovenhoof support you. See you next time.